Hello, it's Moira. Welcome to Tag Along a Moira. Um, I'm planning on making a couple of vintage themed tags here for some journals that I'm working on. Uh, so I've just cut some card. Uh, the card I'm using is, a, I think it's called Hot Pressed Watercolour card. I've got one that's slightly bigger because what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to collage and that whole thing. I'm going to cut it using a circular die. Uh, so I'll do that last. But meanwhile we'll start on these two. Uh, I'm just going to use this piece of Edith Holden under my work surface so that I can uh, glue with gay abandon. I also want to cut some what do you call it? Some paper, just book pages, so that I can use these uh, as background to the, the collage itself. Um, so I'm just having a look at what I've got here on my desk, and I'll be using that. Uh, my background and we'll work around about it. Uh, but that needs to be quite so big. Um, my glue that I'm using today is Liquitex Matte Gel. Uh, I have to admit that I, of all the glues I've tried this is probably one of the ones that I prefer. I'm quite sure everybody's uh, matte gel mediums will be pretty much the same. Um, it just so happens this is the one that I, I bought. So, and it worked out okay, so I've kept using it. Just using a couple of different pieces of text from books. I want to, whatever possible, have it all covered in text. Um, once that's dry, I'll be planning and go over it with a, a little bit of gesso. in the background completely. I think what I'll do is in terms of sticking that down. I think I've done a pretty good job of gluing it to my of holes. Right, there we go. That's those stuck. Basically what we need to do now is dry it and then we can uh, start trimming around it and using the gesso on it. So I'll do another one. I'm just going to put that out of the way to get a chance to dry. And then the next piece of card. I'm not sure I've got enough actual book page here to cover these but we'll see we'll see how we get on
think, uh, let's see what else I've got here. Pretty sure I've got some music paper in my desk. Yeah. There's always music paper in your desk, haven't there? Make sure that's well stuck and I'll use a bit of disappointing piece of music. I'm not bother using that. Uh, I'm going to use that down there. Now, need more text. Let's see what we've got. I've got some pages from the stamp catalogue, I can use that. And I've also got... I've actually got some newspaper here that I'm planning on using. Um, well it looks like newspaper, I think it's it was intended as a kind of magazine. It's the if you watched the giveaway video I did um with a kind of fancy bunk vintage junk journal that was made from card but I'd covered it with a magazine cover that effectively looked like newsprint. This is more of that. So I'm going to add that to the bottom there. I want to try and keep it straight. That's us. And lift back on the glue. It's really truly really stuck to make it a folder. Just as well I wasn't planning on using this page either. Oh, yeah. Right, that's us. That needs to dry before we can tackle anything else. Uh, so I'm going to leave that to dry for a minute or two and then we'll do the next bit. So the glue is dry and I've now cut them down to take off the excess that was hanging over the edge. What I'm going to do next is add just the least bit of gesso uh, around some of the joins and the text just to kind of blend it into the back a wee bit. It doesn't really need to be an awful lot. Just to kind of dis distract a wee bit from the, the text. I'm what I'm doing is I'm putting my finger in the, the jar or pot of the gesso. This happens to be that basics heavy gesso that I'm using. Um, trying to scrape it off a wee bit so that it's not terribly thick on my hand. And then just going over it slightly. I'm not looking to completely obscure everything, just distract a wee bit, make it a wee bit faint, well, well in patches, you know, I mean, it's no, this isn't an exact science, I think that'll do me for that one, and we'll leave them to dry now, go to this one.
I've used, I've made a point of trying to get um, different sizes of texts, um, different fonts and whatever, because I think it just, you know, makes it that wee bit more interesting to look at. That'll do us. Now, leave that to dry. So, uh, some time's passed. Um, not really intentionally on my part, but it just so happened that I had other things I had to do. Um, so, we're now at the stage where we need to think about uh, getting a focal point for these tags. Um, I'm just going to work with whatever I've got on my desk and hope that I can make it work. Um, I've got a couple of images that I had to cut out earlier and I'm going to use those and I've got some uh, leaves that I die cut I thought I could maybe use those. I don't like that one so much because there's a bit of black in it. Uh, so I can maybe use those. And I've got a couple of these wee bits that were die cut from when I made frames the other day. So I figured, oops, those could get used. Don't like that one so much, that one's not fine. That's okay but it's not great. Let me just have a wee look at what I've got in my desk here to see if there's anything else I could use. I was trying to keep them to kind of pinkish, I like that one. Uh, pinkish shades. In fact I was swithering in terms of um, the I like things fairly neutral, I have to say, and occasionally I will add a measure of colour. Um, in these, I'm going to add some uh, Distress Ink, just to give them a wee bit of a pinkish tinge, because it will match in quite well with the, the images of the ladies that I've picked. They're kind of predominantly pinkish, if you know what I mean. There's just a an air of pink in them. So we'll start by going over the the edges here with the uh, Victorian Velvet Distress Ink. Uh, just to add a wee bit of... No, wait a minute, my wee bit thing is coming up here in the corner. So that's not stuck very well. So I'll just use a wee bit of glue there. Well, I would if my glue came out. Hold on. Take the pen out the other bottle. Put that down. Right, and then back to the Victorian velvet. So I'm just giving it a kind of pink edging. I'm bringing it on quite a bit, I have to say. Right, I'll do the other one as well, mate, so I'll do them both while I've got the Victorian velvet out. I was actually, I've got, um, what do you call them, gelatos in it. I was toying with maybe using some gelato just to add a bit of colour, but um, I don't know. I'm a bit hit and miss with the gelatos. Although the ones I've got are uh, kind of got a kind of metallic sheen to them, so they But I don't think I've got a pink that's that's good enough for what I want to do. Hold on, I can't really see them because I've piled everything on top of them. Uh, No, they're not. They're not the. They're not the kind of shade of pink I'm looking for. So, if I was um Yoda, or not Yoda, if I was Obi Wan Kenobi, I'd say these are not the pink I'm looking for. So I'm not bothered with them. 
but I will. There's my Victorian velvet again. I'm going to go round the other bits and bobs that I'm using. So for my focal images, I'm going to go round those with a Victorian velvet. I cut this one with um, a heart shape because I just thought it hadn't done that interest. I like things to be a wee bit unusual sometimes and um, not screening this all but just something that makes it stand out. exceptionally windy here today. Um, I've got my door open just now for the dogs to get in and out because most of the morning it was raining so they haven't exactly had a lot of fun running in and out to play. Um, so the theory is they can go in and out as they want just now but I'm not sure they're that fast. We're not long back in from our walk so Do you know what I can say with my hand in my heart? Um, I very rarely seem to be able to make what other people would say a quick tag. Um, right, so I'm just going to dot things about on this. I've also, to for the top, I have uh, some fabric which is kind of pinky florally. It's too big actually, I'm going to cut it down a little bit. I don't think it needs to be quite so long. I'm going to use that to do my own kind of handle on my tag. Right, so I'm going to, I also have die cut this, um, which is just a kind of geometric type thing, and I fancied putting that in my tag. So it's very intricate and there's no way under the sun I'm getting it all to stick down easily and I need to watch uh, because of the it's metallic cardstock you see if you've used too much glue <coughs> it can uh, be quite noticeable so I need to try and just watch what I'm doing when I'm adding the glue to it. I don't need to add a ton. I want to make sure that it's kind of stuck down. I'll stick, I'll dot some stuff on top of it so that it's, you know, to make sure it's definitely stuck down. That way I don't need to glue every single piece of it. But there should be enough to, to hold it in place. It makes me think um, I'll bring over my acetate to hold it down, that way I don't need to get it all over my fingers. Um, I, d um, I don't know what it is about it, but it kind of makes me feel a bit 
Art uh, Nouveau. Maybe it's just because it's kind of swirly and round and whatever, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Um, but that's... Right, that wee bit needs going to... No, that's not working, so hold on a minute can we do that to make sure we've definitely got some glue on. It's not for staying down that, that's all. should definitely be some glue on it. If I definitely put glue on, I think it just needs held down in place. What I'll do, now I ripped this slightly here when I was working. Uh, so I'm going to stick something on that to cover that over. These are actually quite big tags. I think they're too big for the journal I'm actually working on at the moment. But that's okay, it's not as if they'll go to waste. There will be another journal, I'm sure. things about on top to provide interest by way of being an extra layer but also obviously to become more prominent focal points on the, the whole tag. I think I'll put one more lead up there. If I use this, then there's less chance of me getting it all over my hands to subsequently touch something else. I think that will do us. And I want to stick this on the top, so I need to put a little glue on the back bit and the bit that's going to form in the front. And then stick these on. That's fine. I've actually got, I've got some letters, I die cut some letters earlier as well and I'm thinking, letters and numbers I did, I'm thinking I might just add those over that as well. Um, 
just for added interest. No, no rationale to which letters are used. Um, this I think the, the A, B, C, and D. I can't think. Um, so we're going to shove a B here. I'm going to set that on top of it to hold it down. I don't know whether or not I want to add a number or something. Uh, I think my letters are too big to add to anywhere else, but I could put a number down there. going to be that tag. You'll hold it up for you to see. Just want to check I've got it in sight. So that's a B2 or 2B. To be or not to be a tag. Um, my wee lady here needs a bit of, of dust. Her face needs a wee bit of dust. Well yeah, that's fine. Oops, knocked her out of place. She's not stuck yet. Right, that's us. We'll leave that to dry and we'll move on to the next one. Now, I don't have any big die cut shape here, but I do have a couple of words that I had cut. I don't want them too far in the background, to be honest. I think I would prefer the words more prominent in this one. So, let me see, I've got a wee bit of music I could add. No, don't like that. I've got my leads. I've got my little floral image. I've got my lady which is uh, being heart, cut with a heart shape and we'll put her at a bit of a jaunty angle and I think once we've done that the two words I've had to die cut are moments and everyday but I think everyday might be too much for this I think I'd be better off with moments and I'll explain to you why. I quite like my words, when I'm adding a word like that, to be at the side. The problem with everyday is it's got the bits coming down for the Y's and it's got the big bit for the D. So if I sit it that way, the word itself is quite far in. If I turn it that way, the word's still quite far in because of the D, so we're going to leave that. We'll use that, and I shall maybe add a letter and maybe number. You can add a wee number down the bottom there. And again, I've got a bit of that uh, fabric for my thing, my wee tail up the top. So I'll just cut a wee bit off that because it's too long. Right, let's get sticking. I think that could afford to come up a bit higher actually. Right, blue.
prefer when I'm doing things like this if um, the colours coordinate reasonably okay. I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, if my, I think the journal I'm making, uh, well, in the event I don't think these will fit in the journal I'm making, I think the journal is smaller than this tag. Um, but what I was going to say is, I think the the colour of the journal itself, I'm not overly concerned about necessarily <coughs> matching that to the tag, but I do like when I'm making a tag, you know, if it's predominantly pink, I wouldn't suddenly have something that's maybe yellow with it or something like that, do you know what I mean? I would, I prefer for things to kind of reasonably coordinate. So, so this is tag A four or four A, depending on what way you want to look at it. I'm just going to have that at the bottom. Now, my moment is quite thin, so we're back to using the zig. Just about this part of this little tab at the top. Glue on these. Right, and we'll hold that up now. It's not completely stuck down yet because what I would normally do is get my acetate, put it over the top and then lay it down with the likes of this acrylic block to make sure it's stuck. And that should pretty much be it. And a couple of wee bits of glue spewed out the side but it dries clear so it will disappear. I'll hold that up for you to see and that's that. So there's the two tags. Um, just basically using stuff I've got lying about. Hope you like them. Hope you learned something. And I'll see you all again soon. Bye.